All right, friends, this is part two of video 2.1. I promise they won't all be this long. All right, here we go. Uh, so we have two approaches to calculating GDP. Approach number one is the expenditure approach. If you're thinking of your circular flow diagram, think of the expenditures that consumers or households make in the product market and expenditures that businesses make in the resource market. So those are the expenditures that we are talking about. So we can track that. And the other approach is the income approach. So the income households make from selling their resources, and the income businesses make from selling their products. Okay, so let's get into it. The expenditure approach. Oh, I just talked about that. Income, there you go. We'll talk about that again in more detail in a little bit. It's just a sum of all of the income gained from production. So two ways to track the same thing. We normally uh, estimate or calculate expenditure. And then we use the income approach to test it. Like, did we get this right or did we miss something? Because every dollar spent is a dollar earned. So income is going to equal expenditures. Okay, so here we go. What are expenditures? Well, the equation is actually quite simple. C plus IG plus G plus XN equals GDP. I call it Sig Jixon. Sig Jixon. <laughs> it's dumb, but... You'll remember it. Sig Jixon, consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports equals GDP. Those are all the expenditures. Consumption, expenditures of consumers. Investment, uh, expenditures of businesses who are trying to have labor assist. So that's capital. Government spending, that's obvious. And then net exports, foreign countries spending money on our goods, for example. Okay, let's get into it. We're going to break down each of these. First is consumption. It's also called personal consumption. And these are all the expenditures by households on final goods and final services. So when you buy a car, you buy a sandwich, or you pay for a massage, or you pay for a doctor's visit, or you pay for somebody to wash your car, or you buy a new shirt, or you buy new shoes, or you buy some food, right? All of these things are considered consumption. Remember, it's only final goods. We're not talking intermediate goods here. It's not when you buy the lettuce that you then will use to build a sandwich to then sell the sandwich. If we counted it both of those times, the lettuce when I bought it and the sandwich when I sold it, then that would count it as twice. So instead, it's just the final good. Intermediate goods are not counted here. Now, there are two types of goods. There's durable goods and non-durable goods here. Not really that important, but just so you know, a durable good is something that lasts longer than three years, makes up about 10% of our total GDP and then our total consumption. And then there's non-durable goods, which last less than three years. I think food, uh, those are about 30%. So those last a little bit longer. And then services, we're actually a service economy. We consume 60% of our consumption is on services. So if you think about it, yeah, we pay a lot for the services that we want. Okay, so that's consumption, expenditures by households, people like you and me, on the goods that we use to satisfy our own utility. IG has a long name, but don't worry about it. It's gross private domestic investment. Gross means all. Private means within the private sector. So businesses are selling it. It's not the government. Domestic, within the borders of our nation. Investment, the purchase of capital goods. So investment is simply the purchase of capital goods we've been talking about, right? We know capital goods make people more productive. Businesses have to buy those tools and buy those capital goods. So here are all the things that are counted. First, all final purchases of capital goods by firms. So whenever a firm buys a new machine or a new tool, that's counted as investment. Think of it as investment because I buy it today because it will result in growth in the future. That's why it's investment. All new construction counts, right, including houses. Why? Well, when I build a new building or new construction, I am I'm investing in that area. Uh, I am it's going to lead to more productivity in the future, and I can't count it as consumption when I'm building the house, when I'm purchasing the house, because if I I would be counting it twice. So any new construction counts under investment. Okay, and then finally, and probably most importantly, capital goods, and then all changes in investment. Right or inventory, sorry. All changes in inventories are considered investment. If I have a plus or an increase in inventory, it means I produce more than I sold. That's an investment for next year. And if I have a decrease in inventory, it means I sold more than I produced, then that's going to be negative on investment. So it looks like this. Uh, so for inventory, if we have plus $10 billion in inventory in the nation, that means we had $10 billion that was produced but not consumed. 
GDP counts everything produced, so that's important. But we don't want to count it as consumption because it hasn't been consumed. So our investment is going to go up by $10 billion. If next year I sold that $10 billion plus I sold more, so all of the, I sold everything I produced plus my inventories from the year before, and inventory went down $10 billion, when I sold what was previously counted, so I had to subtract that. So I counted it last year because it was investment. And I sold it this year. I don't want to count it twice. It's not consumption. I decrease investment to cover that. Okay. Uh, gross, there's some uh, investment over time. You'll see how investment goes up and down. Those are changes in inventory. So inventory has dipped significantly uh, during 2008 because people were worried about the future. And then they went up again and they're pretty consistent. Uh, gross private domestic investment is not stock markets. It's not financial transactions. In fact, we don't count financial transactions because it's not the exchange of a good or service. What we do count is when you have a financial advisor and you pay them for advice on your financials. But the bond purchase of and selling of stocks uh, does not count at, towards our GDP at all. That's speculation. It's money out of nothing, basically. And we'll talk more about that later. Let's keep that in mind. Government expenditures are money that the government uses to provide public goods and public services. So public schools are funded by taxpayer dollars. Those are expenditures by the government. That's positive for our economy. Think of it this way. When the government purchases a new school or buys a new desk or pays for new teachers or builds a new nuclear warhead, when they do that, they have to pay people. And when they pay people, it jumps into our cycle. Right? Those people then get income, they take that income, and they go to the product market and purchase that in the circular flow diagram. Okay, net exports, final one. It's exports means they're produced here, but they're bought elsewhere. So I export American goods and people buy American cheese, I guess, over in, I don't know, Norway. They're buying American cheese in Norway. That's an export because that money is going to flow back to the United States company. So it's produced here, it's sold there. The workers that are working are working here so that money stays within our circular flow diagram. Imports are negative because they're produced there. I bring the, the products into our nation and then the money flows out of our economy and into their economy. And the circular flow happens over in Norway, right? So that's a negative. Net exports takes an additional equation. It's exports minus imports. If you got that down, you're good. Exports minus imports will give you that. Okay. Uh, here are some net exports for the United States. Net exports is the, uh, or actually, sorry, imports are the giant orange. Exports are the blue. Clearly, over time, our imports are far greater than our exports, but we're getting a little bit better at that. So that's nice. So how do you grow your economy? If the growth of your economy depends on the growth of GDP, how do you do it? Well, pretty simple. I want to increase consumption. I want to get people to buy more goods and services. So you might do that by raising the minimum wage, for example. I want to increase investment. I want businesses to invest more in capital goods so that we're more productive in the future. Okay. So how do you get, do that? How do you pr promote inventories? You might do all of those things through tax breaks, for example. I want the government to spend more money. Yes, I know it's counterintuitive, but for GDP, I want the government to spend money. In fact, when we're in a recession, GDP is going down. The government spends trillions of dollars for that very reason, because consumption's falling, investment's falling, exports are falling. 